thank you for watching the video. What we're going to do is we're going to replay the video. Everyone is making money except you based around Avis stock. And the reason why I wanted to replay this is because this week, what we've seen is this stock really, really start to break down aggressively. It broke down on the chart because we believe that there's a fundamental breakdown in the company. Now I've been talking about Avis for two years. I was about a year early on this particular stock, but what we're seeing in 2024 is that pricing is getting ready to probably reset in comparison to value. Now, why am I replaying this? I'm not replaying this because I'm doing a told you so. I'm replaying this because what I want you to understand is this. You can go into this market and you can learn what is going on and you can be successful in these spaces. You don't need a PhD. You don't need a financial degree. You don't need to be a CFP and you don't need to just say, all I'm going to do is buy the index. Now you can just buy the index if that's what you choose to do. However, you can actually go into these spaces and be successful once you actually take the time to learn how to do this. And this is a skill that's not going to be perishable based on what well, only work for the next three years and then it doesn't work anymore. And I've seen a lot of that in the online space, or you can only do this skill when you're young, like you're playing a sport. And then once you get 30 years old, you can't do it anymore. It's not that type of skill. And it's also not that type of opportunity, right? This marketplace is going to be here when we're gone. It was here before we were born. It's going to get easier and easier to trade from a mechanical standpoint. However, you're still going to have to have the understanding, but it's that understanding of the market, that understanding of how to trade puts you in position to take advantage of opportunities like this. And to be real with you, the opportunities to the upside are always going to be greater than the opportunities to the downside. So I want to get you to watch the video again and ask questions around the actual play if you have them, but try to put yourself in a position to understand how did he go through this methodology to understand that this particular situation was going on and then it would lead to these particular things. Hope you get some value from it. Talk to you later. Here is a testimonial for the highest paid part-time job in the world from Katrina Alexander. So I'm approaching three years in this academy. All of my accounts have increased trading, investments, business, and personal accounts. This academy can produce results in all areas of your life when you do the work. Yes, you have to work on your psychology and mindset to get the results. Thanks for tuning into the video. In this video, what we're going to talk about is how I believe SRS is using Avis as a piggy bank to pull money out of the company because they're getting ready to exit and Avis stock price is getting ready to fall. Now, this will not be investment advice, it will be my own opinion. But what I'm really trying to do with this video is to help you see trades way before they start to happen. And this can be a very powerful skill that you can take into any market because all markets function under similar principles. However, the average American has only been taught to engage the market as a consumer. Therefore, they can't see these things or they're just coming up with a bunch of different theories, but they never really learn to get the confidence to act on their theory. And here's what I want you to kind of understand, frame this properly. There was a movie I was watching with Jamie Foxx. I think it was Jesse Smollett's sister and a lot of other people who I don't know. And one of the guys owned a mortuary business, so he was a mortician. And he was looking to sell his business. This is one of the characters in the movie. And he went to another guy who owned a similar business and he was trying to figure out, could this guy acquire my business from me? And the guy explained, I'm looking to buy these businesses because I believe that there's going to be an increase in deaths as baby boomers start to pass away and I can take advantage of that increase. And he was forecasting the future based on a model that he had and he was trying to position himself to make money off a cycle that was going to change in the market. Okay, now this guy was a business owner. He didn't have to go to school to be a financial advisor. He didn't have to go to school to be certified and licensed to understand how to take advantage of a market cycle based on the business that he was in. And he was able to explain how he wanted to position himself for the cycle. This is a skill that you want to learn if you start to engage in any market. Is what do I believe is the forecast in this particular space? So let me give an example of what we're talking about with Avis. Avis is a company that was able to benefit from a cycle. What was the cycle? The cycle was the pandemic. What did the pandemic do? 
First, the pandemic made it to where nobody could travel. Then what did the pandemic do? The pandemic made it to where everybody wanted to travel because they could not travel. Also, what the pandemic did is it made it to where there was a shortage on chips. So cars could not be manufactured at the same capacity or at the same number than they would be manufactured pre-pandemic. So then what happened? The cost of cars went up. So what we had during the pandemic is that we had people traveling and they were paying more to travel and they were also paying more to rent cars. As a result, Avis was able to take advantage of that cycle. So what does it do? It made Avis seem like they were a much more profitable and, a, and able to capture more revenue out of the market because of a cycle. But we were just in a cycle. And then therefore, people were able to benefit from that cycle by investing in Avis. And it's my narrative that we're getting ready to leave that cycle. Right? Because people have essentially gotten their fulfillment from traveling. We're going back to traditional travel patterns. And I don't think Avis will drive the same type of revenues that it drove over the past two to three years because we're going back to a normalization of our travel cycles. Okay, so let's talk about this Avis situation. December 5th, 2023, Avis has announced that they're going to issue out a $10 per share dividend. That's going to be payable on December 21st, 2023rd for everybody that owns those particular stocks by December 15th, 2023. So by the time you watch this video, it may be too late to buy to take advantage of that dividend. The company is going to purchase 1.3 million shares in the fourth quarter, 2023 for aggregate purchase price of approximately 240 million. There's 820 million left under the share repurchase program. Now Avis is issuing out a $10 per share dividend. That's a pretty hefty dividend. Normally you see big special dividends like this with companies that are performing really well and they're very optimistic about their future. And as a result, what they want to do is they want to reward their shareholders. That's normally when you see these scenarios, not all the time. Now, what we want to do first is look at Avis and understand that their dividend payouts have never been that robust historically. So what we do is we go to Yahoo, look up the total history of the company that we have on Yahoo, look up dividends only. We see the last dividend was paid out in 06 at a 17 cent dividend. Looks like the 05 dividend of, of February 1st, 2005, a 172, that looks like a special dividend, okay? So they don't have a history of really paying out a dividend. In fact, the last dividend that they paid out on a quarterly basis was paid out on September 23rd, 2006. And that was a 17 cent dividend. This is not a dividend stock. And when you're looking at the market, normally people are owning a stock because they're gonna see growth in shares or they get paid to own the stock. That's normally the justification for owning a stock. Now, when we start talking about large funds, people got to really get their head to understand this. Large funds do coverage because they have so much money. If you have a trillion dollars in assets under management, you just buy everything, right? Therefore, when you are an individual investor, you can not often take a signal from a large hedge fund that has a trillion dollars AUM as to what to buy, because when you got a trillion dollars AUM, you just buy everything, right? Because you get paid for AUM anyway, you don't get paid for returns, so you just buy everything. So often, you will see large funds buying stocks that don't pay dividends and often don't have growth just because they are just trying to get coverage across the market because they have so much capital to outlay. That's why often what they do is not a signal to what an individual investor needs to do, in my opinion. Now, here's what I mean when I'm saying that SRS is going to use this company to cash out. SRS is the largest shareholder of Avis, and you can see that here, right? So on NASDAQ, we're looking at Avis. We see that they have institutional ownership of around 100%, okay? We see that SRS management or SRS investment management owns around 17 million shares, right? Really like 17.5, Okay. They're the largest institutional holder of Avis. I have them around 43 to maybe 45%, which means that they're the largest single individual shareholder of Avis. You also see BlackRock, Vanguard, but we talked about before, these large hedge funds like BlackRock and Vanguard, they buy everything because they have to buy something because nobody gives them money to park it. 
SRS is going to be different because they definitely don't have AUM of a BlackRock and a Vanguard. So it means more that they have 40% of Avis than it means that BlackRock and Vanguard got a million shares, around 2 million shares each. doesn't mean the same thing. Because if you look at most companies that are over a certain market cap, you're going to see BlackRock and Vanguard in those particular companies. And we talked about before, Avis was not even a dividend stock and it was not even a high growth stock. But it's just somewhere for those large financial institutions to put their money. And I want to really encourage you to be able to discern the two scenarios, right? Now, we're looking at the board of directors for Avis. This is from their investors page. We see this guy, Pawa, vice chairman. And we see this guy, Sarma, another managing partner, SRS Investments. So we see on the board of directors, we got two guys from SRS, right? Two Brahmins from two Brahmin Indians sitting on the board of directors for SRS. It's my narrative that SRS, and this started happening in 2020 when they all came on board, and you can go Google that, is that SRS is essentially getting ready to get out of this deal. And what they've done is they've influenced the board, right? Because the guy's a vice chairman. So he's right under the executive chairman. It's my opinion that SRS is using their position on the board to cash out because not only are they on the board, they own 40%, right? Around 40% of the shares. So essentially what they can do is they can act as an activist investor. And they can make this company go in the direction that they want it to go into. And that what that's what you can do when you have a sizable position. You don't have to own 40%. Hell, you can own 10%. But when you own a large amount of the shares and you sit on the board, you have a large amount of power in that company. And so that's what I want people to understand. It is my opinion that SRS is behind this $10 per share dividend payout because I don't understand how this benefits the company. Now, dividends are good to pay out. There's nothing wrong with paying out a dividend. The challenge is that how does paying the dividend help the company, right? If we're paying out a dividend, but it's hurting us to pay it out, why would we do it? And that's what I want you to really understand. How does paying out this $10 per share dividend help out Avis and how does it benefit shareholders long term? If you're a retail investor in Avis, let's say you get $100 on this special dividend. How does that help you long term? Especially if you bought Avis within the last year. So if in the last 12 months you bought Avis stock, you're getting ready to get you a $10 dividend, a $100 dividend, which means you own around 10 shares. But how does this dividend pay out and them taking the money out of either free cash flow or the cash that's in the holdings of the company? How does that help Avis long term? So we talked about really quick math. SRS has around 17 million shares times $10. We estimate that they're going to get around $170 million out of this payout. So they're going to be issued around $170 million. So now the question you want to ask yourself is where does that money come from? Is this coming out of free cash flow? Is it coming out of money that is in the bank or is it going to get financed? I doubt it gets financed. In my opinion, and I haven't been able to find the documents for this yet, I believe it's probably going to come out of free cash flow. Now, that free cash flow can be used for other things inside the corporation. But they're going to use that free cash flow to pay out the special dividend the same way I believe they're using the free cash flow to buy the stocks back. Right now, here's the stock buybacks that we want to talk about. Now, here's something else that I believe that SRS has influenced them to do. Now, correlation does not always equal causation. We see that SRS came on the board around 2020. Then what we started seeing is around a, a lot of really aggressive stock buybacks on a quarterly basis, right? Here's a graph showing the stock buybacks, but also you can go down here. We see 490 September 30th, 2023. We see 149 June 30th, 2023. We see 51 March 30th, 2023. 755, 826, 449 March 31st, 2022. I remember this. They did a $1.2 billion stock buyback, right? 463, December 31st, 2021. We got $975 million stock buyback, September 31st, 2021. Very aggressive stock buyback starting late 2021. Now, what is the stock buybacks doing? They're skewing the earnings per share because what we're doing is we're taking these shares out of the market. They're no longer available to be traded, but we're driving revenues. So it's making it seems like our earnings per share is really going up. But the only reason why it's really going up is because we have less shares available to be traded. 
but we're also at a time to where because of the cycle that we're in, we're able to draw back greater revenue because we're in a different market where there was a shortage on cars, inventory on cars were low. So people were willing to pay more money to get access to automobiles just so they could travel because there was a lot of pent up demand because of the pandemic. Now look at the stock price of Avis. And I talked about this with somebody in my Discord group the other day, right? They took a shorter term look and I said, no, extend out the look. Avis didn't start doing operations three years ago, right? Avis has been around since I believe the 80s. I could be wrong, but Avis has been around a very long time. So when you zoom out on Avis and we're looking at a max chart on monthly candles, right? Here's the pandemic 2020. Here's 2012. Avis was trading at $14. Goes up to $60, 2015, trades in this range. So let's say from 2012 to 2022, Avis traded between zero and $100. This is the trading range of the stock, right? So for years and years, we keep going back. For years and years, Avis is trading between $0 and $100, right? Goes up to 60 here, I'm sorry, goes up to 40 in 1998, comes back down but this is where it traded at. Then all of a sudden in 2021, it starts to move up very aggressively. And now it starts to trade well over hundred dollars. We had that big day. And I remember that day where they had earnings. They opened up the next day and went all the way up to 545, hit almost $600. And then it traded in a range for pretty much three years. And it's still in that range between 150 and let's say maybe 220 to maybe 240. Okay. But if you just look at the past two years, it really doesn't get you to understand where Avis has been at. So the question I ask people is that what changed about the company to justify it trading in these ranges? And how long can that change maintain itself? So let me give you an example of what I mean, right? In the markets, you have something called secular changes and you have something called market cycles. They're not the same thing. Many times people confuse the two. So let me give an example of what I'm talking about. Digital media and music was a secular change. It wasn't a market cycle. Therefore, when the music industry started to realize that people are starting to favor listening to music on portable digital devices, this became a secular change in music. So we got a whole generation of people literally that have never been to a record store. They have no idea what that is because they don't exist anymore because why you can get all your music digitally off the internet. That's a secular change. It's not a market cycle. Let me give an example of what a market cycle is. I'm in a corporation and I sell a product and we make a hundred million dollars a year for three years. And then our product is featured on a movie and it becomes a trendy product. And so for the next two years, we make $300 million a year over year to year. Then the trend dies out and we go back to making a hundred million dollars a year. That was a market cycle. Wasn't a secular change. And often people confuse the two. Now you could have a market cycle inside a secular change, but every cycle doesn't represent a secular change. And many people confuse a cycle where we have a secular change in the market where the whole market is shifted to this type of behavior or this type of demand or this type of desire. And now that's what we're doing. Many people have tried to sell that EVs are a secular change in the market. I've yet to see that be substantiated. It may just be a cycle that we're in because why EVs are not new. Electric cars are not new. They've been around for decades. So the question is how come they didn't stick 20 years ago, but I'm supposed to believe they're going to stick now, right? So this is what I want you to understand. In my opinion, these prices in this range are a representation of a cycle, not a secular change in the corporation. I don't see anything about Avis that has changed in their operations, in the market, in the desire for rental cars, in the way in which rental cars are rented, in the behavior of their customers, and the earning power of their customers, and then been able to go into new markets and access. If Avis says, hey, you know what? We're getting ready to open up operations in China and the China economy is really starting to boom. They're starting to get upward mobility in their customers. So now they're going to travel more and rent more cars. Okay, that's a secular change, but I'm not seeing that. Does Avis do international business? Yes, but
but they're not speaking to any change in their international business that will substantiate a secular change in the market for rental cars. Also, look at the comparables. Who's the comparable in the market for rentals? So if we go down, what one of the comparables is gonna be Hertz. Hertz is trading at 8.66. So my question is, if Hertz is trading at 8.66 and they're also a comparable in the car rental space, how do we justify this particular price for car at 192 on December 13th, 2023? So the comparables are wear off. And when you're looking at how to evaluate a company, you look at the comparables in the same market as them, right? That's what I want people to understand. Therefore, in my opinion, once this deal is over, they pay out this little $10 per, per share dividend. Over time, we're gonna start to see SRS get out of their position. They're gonna do it very methodically because I don't think they wanna tank the stock because they're still sitting on the board. But I don't think these prices can sustain themselves. And they've sustained themselves since late 2021. But I'm asking you, look at the history of this particular company. What about the company has changed since it started moving up? And are we in the same market? We saw this with Peloton. Peloton was in a market cycle. Everybody ran to the stock. When the cycle went back to what normally what people do is they leave their house to go to the gym, what do we see? The bottom drop out of the Peloton. Right. There was not a secular change in the market to where people say, you know what? I don't want to leave my house. I just want to sit in my house and watch the bike and watch this big iPad. And I want to work out like that. Do we have some people that enjoy doing that? Yes. But a lot of people want to go to the gym. They want to get out of the house because some people, they tired of being cooped up. They want to go socialize and talk to people. They like that. They like the group uh, activities. I know the women that go to my gym, they love their aerobics class. They're not going to give that up. They love it. That, that class is packed every day they have it. That's what I want you to understand. So you got to realize the difference when you're looking at a company and when you're looking at a market, the difference between a secular change and a market cycle. And the guy that was in the movie with Jesse Smollett's sister and Jamie Foxx, he was talking about a market cycle, not necessarily a secular change. Because once we put all those people in the ground, we're going to go back to what we were doing before that. That's just how markets work. And so you see these in markets all the time, but people often confuse a cycle for a secular change because everybody wants to be the person that forecasts the market is shifting. Everybody wants to be that guy. I was early on saying the market is shifting. They want to be that guy. They want to be the futurist. And that's cool. I mean, people brand themselves that way. But what I want to really encourage you to do is understand the difference between the two. Okay, so let's keep going. Looking at Avis, and we we're talking about this. Where is the money going to come from to pay out the special dividend and then also continue to maintain the $800 million in stock buybacks. So now we know it can't come out of the cash because the cash is 572. If they just pay SRS's piece of the stock buyback out of cash, it's pretty much going to split the total cash in half. Therefore, I don't think that this payout's coming out of the cash. I think it's coming out of free cash flow. I just can't find documentation of that. And I haven't been able to look through all of their accounting to find out where that's coming from. I believe it's coming out of revenues, turning into free cash flow, and they're going to use that to pay out this dividend and then also use that to continue to maintain the stock buybacks because they really don't have a lot of money in the bank compared to the debt that they have, right? And this is why I think that this is a cash out for SRS. Avis has a really, really large debt position that's not negative because of the revenues that they bring in, right? When you bring in revenue of $12.0 billion, trailing 12 months, you're really not worried about your long-term debt because of your revenues that you actually bring in. But we talked about before, I believe those revenues are going to start to be threatened in time because they were in a cycle that allowed them to really drive a lot of revenue in. So it allowed them to do all these stock buybacks. It allows them not to do the special dividend. I think we're going back to a normal cycle for them. What do we mean by normal cycle? Well, Avis is really a 50 to hundred dollar stock. So before the pandemic, 2019, they were trading at 2664. I gave them a little bit of an overvaluation. They was a $30 stock, right? And it wasn't until, and I remember this when it started moving up, late 2021, where they started to really move up. Because now everybody's going back to travel, and we know that there's a car shortage, so they can demand more at the counter for you to rent their cars. Because I went to travel from Houston to Atlanta, and I was looking at car rentals, 
And it was like $600 to rent a car for four days. I went and got me a Toro. I said, no way in the world I'm going to pay that. This don't even make no sense. And I'm talking about a compact. I'm not talking about no, you know, BMW. But they was getting that money from people. Because a lot of people don't want to do Toro because there's a lot of logistics issues with Toro. And that's what I want you to understand. In my opinion, they're going to go back to their normal cycle. So then therefore, if revenues start to go down quarter to quarter, year to year, how do you justify the share price? Where's the value in the company? If you buy right now today at 193, right, 88, why do you think the price would be higher in two years? What about this company and their operations? What about the market? What about the market cycle that we're currently in would make you believe if you buy at 193.88 today, the price would be higher in two years? And what I'm not a fan of is a company buying at these prices north of like 150, but really north of 100. Because when they go to sell these shares back into the market, if they ever try to do that, in my opinion, they're going to take a big haircut on the shares. And in my opinion, what SRS is going to do is slowly get their shares back into the market, but they're going to make a profit because of where they came in. They came in well under $100. Now, we also can look at Avis's long-term debt. We saw that there was an increase in September 30th, 2023, a 32.39 increase year to year. They also extended some of their debt payments. That's not going to be as big of an issue because of what they're driving the revenues. But eventually they're going to have to service this debt. And so where is the money going to come from to service this debt? And so I don't think, let me go here. It was wise to not service the debt, but to do stock buybacks with money that can be used to service the debt. Right. But that's what the board decided they wanted to do. The CEO decided that he was fine with that and the shareholders did not object to it. And what I would have preferred them to do was to use the revenues, especially during a high revenue environment, because we were in that particular environment of driving more revenues historically to pay back the debt. But they chose to use that to do stock buybacks and now to issue out to special dividend. But this is what I want you to understand. When you can have a longer term view of a situation, right? And you can understand what are some of the moving pieces in a scenario. And you can put those together to craft a narrative. You can put yourself in a position to make a lot of money in any market. Okay. And this is what business people do all the time. If you're a business owner, you have to be able to forecast the cycle that you're in and understand how do we position ourselves to take most advantage of the cycle. Right. Because you're a business owner. So as a person that is involved in the markets, start seeing yourself as a manager of capital. The capital that you're managing is your business. Your life is your business. Okay. And what is going on in the markets that you need to position yourself for? And how can you forecast and model that out and then put yourself in a position to sit somewhere to where you can take advantage of the situation and let the people that, you know, want to play the game of, I got to go get a piece of paper to forecast, let them play that game. That's their game. Let them be the best at it, right? If that doesn't benefit your capital, don't worry about that, right? Because business owners every day are doing what we just talked about. And so I listened to Hertz earnings call. They have a totally different perspective on the market than Avis does. Why? Because that's their business. Okay. And so you got to really understand, make your business the priority, make your situation a priority, align yourself with people that can help you get the best result and, and put everything else by the wayside. Hope you got some value from it. David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. I'll talk to you later.